The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. For number 12, we have to evaluate a cosine with two arc functions added in the middle, or inside of it. Keep in mind that an arc cosine or an arc sine of something gives you an angle. So this makes sense. We have cosine of some angle plus another angle. And for that, we have to use the cosine addition angle formula. So remember that cosine A plus B is equal to cosine A cosine B minus sine A sine B. So our A and B in this function are just a little bit more complex. They're arc sine of one third and arc cosine of negative two thirds. So when we plug this in for us, we're going to get cosine of arc sine one third times cosine of arc cosine of negative two-thirds. So that's our A and B there. Minus, now we're going to do it with the sines. So we get sine of arc sine one-third uh, sine arc cosine negative two-thirds. So if we evaluate all four of those and then just do this uh, operation to multiply these and subtract them, we'll get our answer. So first let's try to figure out what all these are. So when you do cosine of arc sine or sine of arc cosine, you can't think about it in terms of canceling out because you have different trig functions. What you have to do here is you have to set up a right triangle. So let's do one for the arc sine one third. So arc sine one third means the angle that has a sine of one third. So remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So our opposite over hypotenuse has to be one over three for, in order for that to give us an arc sine of one third. So cosine of this angle would just be adjacent over hypotenuse because that's what cosine is on the same triangle. So you can see if we figure out the adjacent then we will figure out what this is. So if you do reverse Pythagorean theorem here to solve for this, you'll get square root of 8 because we need 1 plus 8 to get uh, c squared, which would be 9. So the cosine then would be square root of 8 divided by 3 adjacent over hypotenuse. So this right here is square root of 8 over 3. And we'll worry about potentially simplifying that radical later. Okay, so the next thing we have to do here is cosine of arc cosine of negative two-thirds. So remember, that would be fine if our value was in the correct order. So let's just make sure that this is going to work here. Arc cosine of negative two-thirds, that's fine because remember the domain of arc cosine is negative one to one. It can only output a value in the range zero to pi, and since it's negative, it would go in the second quadrant, because that's where cosine is negative. And then we take the cosine of that, we're gonna get the exact same thing back. So that one is fine. Negative two thirds. Same thing goes here for this one. One-third, that's in between negative one and one, that's fine. When we do the arc sine of that, we're going to get a positive angle in quadrant one. When we take the sine of it, we're going to get back to one-third. So remember, you only really need to be careful about potentially changing the number if you have the arc function uh, in front. If the arc function is on the inside, all you have to worry about is that, was this in the domain? So that's... We were checking that both times. So now for this one, we have sine of arc cosine. We need to set up a triangle again. So this one might be a little bit different, though, because 
we're doing arc cosine of negative two thirds. So we have to think about what that means. The output of our cosine, its range, can only be quadrants one and two, because the range of our cosine is from zero to pi. Well, regardless of if it's quadrant one or quadrant two, when we take the sine of that, sine is positive in both of those quadrants, so this result has to be positive. So when you draw your right triangle, you don't have to take into account negatives or positives. It has to be positive no matter what. So when we draw the triangle for this one, we're, we know that cosine has to be 2 over 3. So that means we have to have that. Adjacent over hypotenuse has to be 2 thirds. Now we just want to do sine of this angle, which is opposite over hypotenuse, so we need to figure out the opposite. Uh, if we do Pythagorean theorem here to figure this out, we're going to get square root of 5, because this is 4, this is 9, that square has to uh, be 5. So our sine is square root of 5 over 3. So we have all four terms, and now we can just do arithmetic here. So this is negative 2 root 8 over 9, if we multiply those together, minus square root of 5 over 9. The last thing we need to do here is potentially simplify this. Square root of 8 can be simplified because 8 has a factor of 4, which is a perfect square. We can take 2 out. So this would be negative 4 root 2 because we take 4 out as 2, but we already have a 2, so we have to multiply them together to get the 4 outside. We're left with a square root 2 in the middle. These already have a common denominator. So we can just put them together already. They're both negative there over 9, so that gives us answer choice E. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu